but this is a well. This, this is a this is a, a two-dimensional curved universe, which is easier to carry around with you through through buses and all the rest. Um, but what I want to show you is exactly mathematically the same as what would happen in principle in the universe in which we live in a curved three-dimensional universe, and and what how you do warp drive. So what I've done here is. Um, uh, I, it, it doesn't matter if you can't, this is kind of an impressionistic experiment, so don't worry if you can't see the details. I have um, this star system here, I have a bunch of stars here, and I have a star system here, and I have a beautiful artistic rendering of the USS Enterprise right, right here. And it's in our local neighborhood, and I've drawn our local neighborhood just for use of the sun, the moon, and, and Saturn here. And, and, and right by the sun, there's a, there's a, a little, there's a Hellbop comet right here. And if you look very carefully, there's a little spacecraft behind the Hellbop comet. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so what I want to show you is how um, the Enterprise can move away from this star system uh, and towards this star system without ever moving with respect to its local surroundings, which is really more us. So, so watch this. <laughs> okay, that's good enough for me. Okay. <laughs> now, what I do is I squeeze this end of the balloon, cause that end of the balloon to expand over there, and carry the stars with it. Of course, and this end of the balloon moves, moved in, but of course, the Enterprise is taped to the balloon, so it's not moving at all with respect to its local surroundings. The space behind it is expanded, the space in front of it is contracted. And that is what is literally possible in principle, given the laws of general relativity. Now the question is, is it possible in practice? The answer is we don't know. We don't know because in order to expand space behind the spacecraft, you have to fill out the space with a very special kind of energy. Something called negative energy. Now negative energy sounds like something that was created by a physicist in a room without windows for too long. <laughs> and, um, and that's true, actually. But, but, but now let's... It, 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 it does exist. We know that negative energy configurations, due, due to the laws of quantum mechanics and special relativity, on very small scales, negative energy configurations can exist for, for very short times. And in fact, they're responsible for, um, we think, for the phenomenon of Stephen Hawking discovery that made him famous on the physicists, the fact that black holes can radiate. So, for very short times, negative energy configurations can exist. But what is an open question is an open question at the forefront of modern physics is can you create a negative energy configuration on a scale large enough and long enough so you can propel a spacecraft from one place to another? That is an open question, and people like me get paid to, to think about it. <laughs> now, if you're like my wife at this point,